online to join us this morning from Honey Rock Victorious Church International. I am Apostle Jerry Upton, overseer and over Honey Rock locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. Amen. Praise God. And that's only to the glory of God. Because you know there is no human way that I could have ever produced what God has done through this body of believers. Now we're going to Psalm 91 again. And I'm going to go again. And I'm going to go again. And I'm going to go again. Because I am a believer that believes Isaiah 55. God's word will not return to him void. But it will accomplish. Now I'm getting ready to read you God's word. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, you're going to read it with me. If I haven't got this coming out of your mouth, I'm going to get it coming out of your mouth now. Thank you, Lord God. Verse 1. Psalm 91, verse 1. You ready? Let's read. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. How I many you know that you are under the shadow of the Most High God? Amen. Because you dwell in the secret place. I found out that, that when I'm not taking for granted that you know how to do that, I've decided that for your benefit and for where you're going, I've decided I'm going to tell you. Amen. Dwelling in the secret place, and I want you to hear this, is a specific designed place where you meet with God on a daily basis. There needs to be somewhere in your house, somewhere in your life. I'll tell you what I did because I am so in need of the divine protection of God, I built God a whole sanctuary right behind my house where he and I commune and dwell. Everything in it is dedicated to God. Every book in it is dedicated to God. I don't allow anything of the world to go in it. And I'm just going to say this, and I don't in, involve those that carry the world to enter in unless they want to get delivered. Amen. Amen. Can you hear me? You say, why would you dedicate a whole area to God like that? Because I need him more than I need appearance. Now, y'all, some of y'all don't know what I mean. Some of you got rooms decorated to appeal to people or to give them the impression that you are prosperous. So this is our home that is absence, the secret place. And, and when people tell me, why would you build such a big, big area for you and God to dwell? Because I value God more than I do fancy things. And if anybody is going to get a hold of God, I'm going to. You ought to feel the same way. You're looking at me like you're in, you're in shock. You ought to feel like that. That if anybody can pray, and God will hear them. If anybody can speak, and God will hear them. It should be you. 
I will, this is what I just did, say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with His feathers and under his wings shall I trust his truth shall be my shield and buckler how many of you need these things to happen in your life I'm going to tell you this before anything hits this earth again you and I are going to be way ahead of it way ahead of sickness Way ahead of disease. Way ahead of vaccinations. Way ahead of wearing masks. Way ahead of listening to lies on TV that cause fear in the people. Why will I not fear? Because I got this. I was working this. And you say, well, how do you work the word? You work the word by speaking it and by believing it. Now, I was, I was working the word, speaking it, releasing it, decreeing it. And God spoke to me as I was speaking these scriptures. And he said, you do know that my word doesn't come back to me without producing the desired results. And I said, yes, that's in Isaiah 55. He said, what are you doing right now? I said, I'm speaking your word. He said, do you believe I live in you? I said, yes. He said, so from the depths of your heart and your soul, my word is coming forth. And this is what he's going to do for you. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. Now, watch what it says about you. Do, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that flies by day. You will not live in a state of fear or terror our dread, our worry, our jumping at every sound that you hear, you will not live that way. Wait, well, let me just break it down for me. I will not live that way. Hallelujah. I've got access to something. Some of you say, well, I got ATT. Well, I got Psalm 91. Glory to God. And if ADT don't respond the way you want it to, Psalm 91 don't ever fail. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that walk wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come nigh me. Now, I want everybody to get in on this because I believe that God's word works. I believe that. I'm directing, I'm directing the body of Christ that is under my voice. I'm directing them to get back into the word of God. That's what I'm directing. I'm directing them to start carrying it. I'm, yeah, and you've got all kinds of avenues of how to do it. I'm directing them to speak it. I'm directing them. I'm going to give you another one today that is going to work for you. Only with my eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Does it mean that the wicked is getting ready to be rewarded with greatness? It means that the judgment that they have insisted on receiving is going to come upon them. Do you see that? I'm going to watch it happen. 
Don't fret yourself because of the wicked. They may look like everything is going great for them, but there is a reward coming for wickedness. And I'm going to see it. Now, because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation. Look at what happens. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Say that, say that again. There shall no evil, neither shall any plague. Now, that's where we're going to set ourselves right now. That's where we're going to set ourselves. We're going to believe that no plague comes nigh our dwelling. That's right. Yes. 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 And we're going to believe God that when it attempts to, it will be driven back. And it will be totally removed from our presence. In the name of Jesus. Now, what are we doing? We are placing our faith in the Word. You got your faith, and you have your faith in something. We put our faith in the Word. Not just on Sunday. Not just on church day, but every day. Hallelujah. Now, it blesses me that God has given me a place that he and I dwell together. And we do what Stan was playing earlier. We commune together. Hallelujah. Amen. Some, some people are saying, well, why would that make you so excited? Do you understand that you, upon you, of all the people on the face of the earth, you get the opportunity to fellowship with God? This is the greatest honor you can have. Talking about you want to go in the king's house. You can live in his presence. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high in my habitation, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They will bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against the stone. That scripture is not just for the Messiah. If the Messiah lives in you, that scripture is for you. Do you hear me? I will tread upon the lion and enter, the young lion. And the dragon shall I trample under feet. How many of y'all know to be able to trample the dragon means that the enemy is under your feet. And because I have set my love upon him, therefore will he deliver me. He will be with, he will set me on high. I told y'all, I told y'all about promotion a couple weeks ago. And I told you that I wanted you to release your faith for it. Promotion, elevation, and exaltation is getting ready, is going to, is happening right now in my life. People can't resist me because promotion is upon me. People can't turn me down. Matter of fact, I love, I love it. I love this. Even those that deal with me who think they have the advantage over me can't win. Let me tell y'all why. Because if they won, 
if they look like they were winning, God extends the game. If they were supposed to win at the end of the ninth inning, then if, I ain't a, if I'm not ahead, God extends the game. Now, I refuse not to be promoted. He will set me on high. I gave this word one day to a young man that was struggling and finding work and and I told him, I said, God is about to divinely promote you over those that outrank you, those that have more seniority than you do, those that are more, they are better liked by the boss than you are, but God is going to break through all of that and set you on high. I said, all I need you to do is receive it. All I need you to do is receive it. I, can, I, can I do it this way? You got to believe something. Why not believe God's best? Because I have known him. He will set me on high because I have known his name. I will call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and will honor me. There's honor. God's going to honor me with long life. And you better believe when you start getting older, this is one of your scriptures. With long life. Amen. You know how we all live life. We all live life. The world, we're so ahead of it that we only leave here when we say so. Yeah. That's right, that's right. If we don't say we're leaving, we don't go anywhere. That's right. And not only does God give you long life, look what it says he does. He gives you long life that is satisfactory. Yeah. You're not going to live your life. I don't consider it to be a blessing to have long life and to not be able to live your life. So with long life, what will he do? Satisfy me. And he will show me his every day. We're going to keep speaking this. Those of you listening to me, you're going to keep releasing it. And you're going to stop worrying and stop fearing because either the word works for you or you ought to close it. Did y'all hear what I said? Some of you, this is all you got. So it either better work or I ain't going to make it. Well, I got an ace in the hole. I don't have that. But I do have this one, Psalm 27. I do have this one. I want to add this to you. You've gotten so used to speaking Psalm 91. We're going to speak Psalm 91 and we're going to add to it 14 more verses. Psalm 27. Hallelujah. Amen. I got a place that I'm taking you, honey rock. Amen. I'm taking you step by step to the place where God has shown me because before anything can attack, we're going to be way ahead of it. So it was brother, I tried that one day and it didn't work. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's a whole bunch of things you've tried. And they didn't come out the way you wanted them to. But you know what? You didn't quit. You kept doing it. 
Hallelujah. And you kept doing it. Every prayer that you prayed has not been answered. But you keep praying. Every time you raise your hands up in praise, the glory don't fall down on you. But you keep raising them. Every time you enter into his courts with praise and singing and dancing and jumping and leaping, doesn't mean that you have the victory you want, but you don't stop. And if there's one thing that I will not do, I'm not going to stop speaking the word. As a matter of fact, right now in my life, I'm speaking it more than I ever have before. And I got something that's a blessing for all of us. We're speaking it together. Those of you that are listening to me today in Africa, you're speaking the word. Amen. You got it in your hands. You have Bibles in your hands and you're speaking the word. You're not speaking what you have. You're speaking what God has said. Listen, your thoughts of worry are bringing things to pass in your life that you don't want. I'm reversing it. Now go to Psalms 27. Praise God. God's word is doing this for me as I get ready to read this. I'm getting more healthier every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My mind is working better every day. Where I was somewhat forgetful, that is moving out of my life. And I'm remembering not just short-term memory, but I got long-term memory as well. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be fully... 100% restored. Somebody comes up to me and said, Brother Jerry, is that you? I said, yes, it's me. They said, man, you look good. See, it's like people think that you are going to just dry up. You know, you know what that means? That means they believe the report of the enemy more than they do the report of God. Now look at Psalm 27. I'm going to say this a few times because there were some people when I said we've been speaking Psalm 91 all week long. All week long. And some people were here and they still didn't hear me. Now I've learned how that, how, that, how that happens. So I'm going to be repetitive in directing you to Psalm 27. And we're going to speak it with Psalm 91 all week long in the name of Jesus. Today when we take communion, we're taking it over compassion dinner. We're releasing our faith in the miracle working power of Jesus. That he saves, heals, delivers, and sets free. Now what are we doing now? For the next seven days, what are we doing? We speaking what? Psalm 91 and Psalm 27. That's right. We're not reading it. We're reading it out loud. We're speaking it. What does it take? Five minutes? 
five minutes to commit yourself to something that can change your whole life. I got a believer. Yeah. Now look at verse one. Now, in order to get it out of your mouth, I want you to read it out loud. Read with me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Or whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. Wait a minute. Where? In the secret of his tabernacle. Where? Shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. Read that one again. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. So before I read the rest, so when you pray and when you cry unto the Lord, what is he going to do? Answer you. Thank you, Lord God, for answering me. When thou says, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto you, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. O God of my salvation. And we got a promise under the new covenant where he said, he would never leave us nor forsake us. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Read that one again. I had fainted unless I had believed. I made a choice. I made a choice. My choice was I was going to believe God. Unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Hallelujah. God's word coming out of my mouth will not return to him void. It will accomplish and it will prosper in the thing where he sent it. I'm going to leave something with the people as I get closer and closer. (laughs) 
the word is going to become the best friend you've got. I've had I've had friends, and you know, this is this is this is true. When you got friends that you really, really like talking to, you talk to them almost every day. It's not even hard to do. This word that you hold in your hand, glory to God, is going to become the best friend you got. In the morning, in the evening, it's not going to be a once in a while situation that you use when you come to church. Now here's what I heard the Lord tell me when I, when I started this, the word that he's giving me. And I was praying for and laying hands on everybody that I knew of that came to this body. And the Lord says, one of the greatest things you can do for the people, speak my word over. I've given you a guarantee. It won't come back to me without producing results. Hallelujah. So, well, brother, you can't say that. Yeah, I just did. I just did say that. Now, people trust in certain things. When you trust in a doctor and he sets an appointment for you, I mean, you know, whether that day, when it comes, whether you want to go see him or not, I mean, y'all know you go. Because you trust him. Right? Y'all don't know nothing about that? Okay. Well, let me try it this way. I mean, y'all know when you get hungry, you go to the store. How many of y'all know don't none of y'all go to the store not thinking that you ain't going to get what you need to eat? How many of y'all know that you believe that you're going to get it? Or otherwise you wouldn't win. Either God's word works or it don't. I'm going to stand on something. God's word coming out of my mouth is the same. Boy, and I know some of you are going to grunt on this one. It's the same as God speaking it himself. Y'all know why I can say that? Because it's his word. It's not my word. It's his word. I've got faith in it. Matter of fact, hallelujah. I've told God when we would have been looking at he's going to set us on high. I told the Lord this. I said, you've shown me things over the years that have totally astounded me. Thank you, Lord. Things happen that I had absolutely no answers for. Yes. Deadlines. That there was no way I could meet. That somehow God made a way. It's no longer a mystery to me. It's no longer. It's no longer a mystery to me. I, 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 I no longer say things like, man, how did that happen? Where did that come from? 
I know how. The word somewhere coming out of me set me up for the blessing of Almighty God. Hallelujah. This ain't about a preacher doing it. This is about a believer doing it. So we're going to enter into Psalm 91, Psalm 27. I don't have all of you that are going to do it, but some of you are. And some of you are going to stay with it. And guess what's going to happen? People are going to watch you get promoted. Some are going to be happy for you. Some are going to be jealous. You know what I learned about people that are jealous of how God blesses me? That's their problem. It's not my problem. You're talking about, well, don't you worry about it? No, I don't. Because if they really had the right heart about it, they would rejoice. Because the next time it might be them. Promotion that is coming your way is not going to be unseen. Some of you already have it on you. I can see it. I can see it happening. Some are kind of like drifting, hoping that I kind of run into this. Hallelujah. Promotion from on high. Let me just give you one characteristic of how it looks. Promotion from on high is that you have an audience with God that is specific and it is real on a daily basis. Amen. Guess what? Guess what your position should be? God talks to me. And I hear him. God speaks to me. And I hear him. No, this should not just be for the ministers or the psalmist. This ought to be for the believer. God talks to me. So if I walk up to you and I say, what has God been saying to you? You ought to have something to tell me. Yes, sir. Or you can have this. Well, what he's told me is private right now. And he, and he don't want you to know what he's told me. Well, is there anything he's told you that you can share? No, not really. I can't share anything that he's told me. And I tell you what. I don't get to I don't get to live that. I don't. I don't get to live in a secret relationship with God. I don't. I get to live in a secret place, but I don't have no secret relationship. Everybody knows I got one. Matter of fact, people people and I've 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 my daughter many times during the day she will take me places, and it's been a blessing for her to be able to be around me like this. You say, man, that's conceited. No, you ask her, and she'll tell you, because I've taken her places and sit down in places, and people not know me, period, come up and do things that has really baffled her. People out of nowhere that don't know you, don't know you as the time of day, come up and pay for your meal and pay the tip and move so quickly that you can't catch them and it looks like an angel visit your table. Let me help you understand. There ought to be some kind of promotion that is happening in your life where other people can see it. Well, 
Brother Upton, I, I don't want people to think that I'm drawing attention to myself. Well, let me help you understand. You're drawing attention to Jesus. He's being glorified through you. Matter of fact, when they come up to you and they say something to you about what your life has meant to them, why, why? Well, I want to be humble. I want to be a humble. <laughs> Humility is not denying what God is doing. It's exalting what God is doing in your life. Is God doing anything in your life? Life. What's your answer? Yes, he is. And he's going to do more because I'm going to speak his word. So I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him this covenant today. Here's my covenant with God. I'm going to speak your word on a daily basis. It's going to come out of my mouth. Those of you that are listening to Honey Rock today, you're going to speak his word on a daily basis. It's going to come out of your mouth. Thank you. You're going to speak his word. You know, one of the great blessings that we are starting to see in Ghana, Ghana is moving really, they already tell you they are, but they're starting to move real strong toward being an English-speaking nation. It's happening right now. They're doing it. They're doing it. They're moving that way. So guess what happens? I told people this. When I've gone to Ghana, one of the things that amazes me about Ghana is that no matter where anybody might live, they got one thing in common. They all got a telephone. And everywhere, everywhere you go, everywhere you go, you see them on their phone like this. See them on their phone like this. And then the ministers tell me about, about either watching us or either knowing what we're doing. So this word that I'm speaking for Honey Rock, Victoria's Church International in America... I'm also challenging the pastors, which now, with all of our pastors, is about 32. And all of the churches. I'm challenging them to speak God's word. Hallelujah. He gave me a promise. He said, this word will go out over the world. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Charles, for believing God with me. In Jesus' name. All over the world. Hallelujah. Through YouTube, with my father's house in Lenore City with Pastor David Thompson, we one time were being seen on over a hundred and I think it was like 150 countries. How does God take someone from nowhere? I'm going to get me a believer in here. I'm after it. Here's... here's Here's the covenant between God and I. I said, Lord, I want to preach this and I want to find a believer. I want a believer to manifest. I do know by the power of the Holy Spirit, those that tell me they will agree with me in the word. And I know those that will. So, here's what I'm going to speak to all my brothers in Africa. 
You've sat under me. You've listened to what God has said through me. You've watched what God has done through our church. It's been a blessing to many of you. It's giving you water. It's giving you transportation. It's giving you an anointing. It's helped your children. Now, you're going to rise up and you're going to be the ones that are planting seed in your children's life. Ain't enough to just keep receiving it. You got to sow it as well. So I'm asking you to sow the word for seven days. To speak Psalm 27 and Psalm 91 for seven days. It's a crop that you are planting that's going to give you a harvest. You know about harvest. In an agricultural community, they know about farming. So then we're going to plant the seed of the word. Amen. Bless you. Amen.